Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And I want to talk about a problem that I've run into many times, and I'm sure other people have run into it as well. You've got a reel, you buy a fly line that should fit on the reel, and now you're struggling to get it to fit, and you're peeling off backing, and uh, you're starting to say, can I actually get this line to fit on the reel? A uh, perfect example is this old uh, Danielson uh, 6.9 fly reel. It's an old design. I think it's been around as much as, probably as close to 30 years. Uh, and it's listed as a 6.9, meaning it can go anywhere from a 6 weight to a 9 weight. Well, I've always thought the 9 weight was a bit generous, but it should handle an 8, anywhere from a 6 to an 8. The other thing that you see, and it's not just Danielson, there's a lot of manufacturers, the, uh, especially on the older reels, the estimate of how much backing they would handle for a given line is often rather generous. Uh, and when you actually put the backing on, you found that you couldn't get anywhere near what you thought you should get and still have some clearance for the line to clear the frame. In this case, it's so tight it's barely clearing the frame, which can be a problem when you're fighting a fish and you're not level winding very well and you can have it jam up on the frame. So in this particular case, I had to use Power Pro uh, to fit this eight weight line on a six, a six nine reel, which in theory, an eight weight should be no problem. So why was there a problem? What caused it? Well, first off, the average fly line is 90 feet long. Cheaper fly lines will be 80 feet. This is 120 foot long. So there's an awful lot more fly line on this reel than you would have with a, a normal eight weight. So it takes up more space. Also, it's an overweight line, so it's a lot thicker. So you've got a double whammy. You've got 120 foot fly line and it's thick. Well, no surprise, it doesn't fit on the reel very well. I would have to actually go up one size uh, to um, really have this a comfortable fit. So when you're buying a fly line and you have a fly reel already in mind for it, and I've lived this, and you, I've gone out and bought the line, and then I've tried to fit it on the reel, it didn't work. I couldn't fit it. And you, if you, now we talked about in a previous video using PowerPro uh, braid, because it's a smaller diameter for the braking strain, you can fit more on it and use up less space, which is what I've done here with this one, it's got PowerPro. That's one option, but I didn't get into other options. Uh, one of the things is not to make a mistake in the first place. Be aware that lines today tend to be overweight, they tend to be thicker, they tend to be longer, like this Airflow Exceed. It's slightly thicker than a regular eight weight because it's slightly heavier, and it's also 100 foot long, not 90. So when you've got a 100 foot long line, it takes up more space. So first off, be aware, how long is my fly line? And remember that most of these uh, capacity charts and sizing charts that you, you'll see online when you're looking at a reel is usually predicated on a standard weight 90 foot line or even an 80 foot line. So a standard weight line is not gonna be very thick and it's not gonna take up as much space as one of these two. So if you pull off, say, uh, a line like this sniper line, uh, Rio, I think they call them outbound. Uh, I think uh, scientific anglers call them Titan lines. These big, thick, overweight, extra long fly lines, you're not, and you buy an eight weight sniper line or Titan or whatever, you're probably not gonna fit it, be able to fit it that easily on some of the eight weight reels out there. I, what I have noticed is some of the newer eight weights are getting bigger. Like the manufacturers are recognizing the problem. They're making the reels bigger. But if you have a reel at home, you go, oh, I've got an eight weight reel at home. I'll be able to fit that. Probably not. Or it's going to be a very tight squeeze that you're not going to be happy with. So one thing is just to be aware before you actually buy the line that it's going to take up an awful lot more space. I mean, really, in terms of uh, some of the lines I've had in the past, this has taken up as much room as a 10 weight. So it's no small surprise that it, it, you know, it doesn't fit on a reel that's designed as a six, nine. And really, when you're looking at a reel that gives you that kind of range, really, it, the nine, usually the top end is marginal. An eight weight is should be okay, but you can see, even even with this one, it's a squeeze. Now I have got the uh, backing up to the bottom of the perforation. Um, but that's still not a lot. If I, if I use this in salt water, I could easily run out of backing on a big fish. So, so number one, be aware of the problem. So when you pick up an eight weight 
line off the shelf, don't automatically assume it's going to fit on your eight, uh, weight reel, especially if it's an older model. Second thing you can do, I, and I certainly could have done it with this line, it's 120 foot long. Well, what I could have done is cut off 30 foot of the back of the uh, running line, the back end of the running line. That would have reduced the space it took drastically, turned it into a 90 foot line. Uh, that is one way to get around all the problems. It's kind of drastic. You know, you've spent a lot of money on, on a fly line and the first thing you do is you cut off a chunk. But you know what? If you're stuck, be prepared to do it. And I have done that before. I had a, a very small reel. I bought a reel too small for the job. And this was quite a few years ago. I have a, a bamboo rod and I bought a lovely, lovely, lovely reel for it. But it was too small. So what I had to do was to fit the appropriate line on it, I had to chop 20 feet off the back of the, of the line, which didn't make any difference because I was fishing for resident trout, which aren't going to run very far. But, uh, you know, the reality is uh, chopping off the back end of the fly line does help. You can save a lot of space by doing that. The other thing you can do, uh, and this is probably less recommended, is some of the running lines out there are quite thick. You could replace them with a thinner one. So you could find a really thin uh, running line, uh, buy it separately, weld it together. I've got a video on welding that shows you how to do that. And you could actually reduce this, the diameter of your running line and be able to fit a full length line onto your reel. That's a drastic solution. Um, not one that I would particularly recommend, but it's a possibility to think about that you can get away with it because the run, this running line is fairly thick. And uh, I've seen other lines too where the, the running lines are fairly thick, which benefits handling. Um, but, uh, you know, you can, you can actually weld on a, a skinnier running line if you really, really had to. So that would be the other alternative to get around it. But I think the, the f number one thing is how old is my reel, you know, and be aware that really old designs like this one may not fit newer fly lines. I mean, really, realistically, a seven weight is about the biggest I'd put on here now using one of these current long overweight lines. It's about seven weight is about it, seven weight floating line. Uh, and you know, the upper end I'll just forget about. I'm using this as an eight and it's tight and it doesn't give me a lot of backing. And it's simply because the lines are long, the lines are thick. And it's an old reel and it was built in the day when an eight weight line was 90 foot long and thinner than these. And then, yeah, an eight weight would fit just fine. So if I put a 30 year old eight weight fly line on there, no problem. So when you're looking at reels, look at the size and be aware that when you are looking at those numbers, say it says seven to nine, uh, unless the reel is really big, and there are some out there that are really big. Uh, the Echo Bravo, for example, I did a rating, uh, review on some years ago. The Echo Bravo uh, is quite a large reel for its rating. In fact, you could, put a spay line on it without any problem. If, unless the reel is really big like that, you're going to have to be careful that it fits uh, your line. And a lot of the large arbor reels being sold are quite small in terms of their, uh, their height here. This height here and the large arbor is actually quite small and it doesn't hold as much as you think it would. Uh, and I've seen people run into problems with those large arbor reels as well being actually, even though they've got large diameter, which in theory should help make up for that skinniness, um, they don't hold as much as you think they will. So be aware, lines are thicker, lines are longer, uh, the running lines are often thicker, uh, and uh, the reel itself may not have quite the capacity uh, as advertised, and it may be actually a little less. And so you're, you're safe at the bottom end of the range, but you're running out of room if you go to the top end of the range. So the, the biggest thing, just be aware of the problem when you're going to go buy a line. Make sure you're aware of how long it is and if it's overweight and if the running line is thick. So, you know, watch out for that and save yourself some grief. Cheers.